Happy Friday the 13th. And what better day to talk about my favorite Friday the 13th movie, which I know I'm gonna take a beating down in the comments for this. My favorite Friday the 13th movie is Freddy vs. Jason. And make sure you stay to the end of the video for a special bonus segment at the very end of the video. So stay tuned and let's talk about Freddy vs. Jason. I'm talking about my favorite Friday the 13th movie, not the best Friday the 13th movie, okay? Because I think that's two different things, in my opinion. But for me, Freddy vs. Jason, that came out in 2003, is my favorite Friday the 13th movie, and probably my favorite Nightmare movie uh, at the same time. That's basically because of the nostalgia that I have for this film. Because up until this day, here in 2024, Freddy vs. Jason is still the only Friday the 13th movie and still the only Nightmare on Elm Street movie that I've ever seen in the movie theater. And much like a lot of my other videos when I talked about seeing movies in the theater uh, during the you know mid to late 90s, early 2000s time period, I saw this again at the second run theater near my house. I, I don't even know how this happened, but somehow, I was able to convince my entire family to go with me to go see this movie. Which, to this day, I can't believe that happened. Because my dad hates movies like this, my mom hates movies like this, and my sisters, who now in their adult life are probably about 50-50 on horror movies and movies like this. But back in 2003, I can almost guarantee that they probably didn't want to see this movie. So how I was able to convince my entire family to go with me to go and see this movie when it came out, I'll never know. It remains a mystery to this day of how that happened. And if you've seen any of my content recently over the last couple weeks, couple months here on my channel, I hold a lot of value with nostalgia with a lot of films and different DVD and Blu-ray releases. And that really plays uh, a lot with me and really holds a lot of weight with me into why I have the feelings and opinions I do on some of these movies. Now I saw this movie at the movie theater like I said a second ago, but I also originally bought this movie on DVD shortly after it originally came out on home video. This was actually one of the earlier DVD releases that I actually picked up and one of the only DVD releases at that time and even to this day really that I bought relatively brand new. I paid full price for it, I didn't buy it used. And it was the two disc DVD set that I ended up keeping for a number of years and I watched quite a bit. But then I ended up trading that in uh, years down the road to get the version I have now, which is the Freddy vs. Jason Blu-ray set which is a single disc version instead of two discs like the DVD. But this is basically the entire DVD set just on Blu-ray. So it's basically the exact same transfer, exact same uh, content, bonus content, whatever, just on one Blu-ray disc instead of a two disc DVD set. Is this movie the best movie in the Friday the 13th franchise or the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise? No. It's not, okay? Is it the smartest, you know, most well-written movie in the world? No, <laughs> okay? Is it stupid at times? Yes, that's part of the charm of this movie. And it doesn't go so bad, it's good, in that it goes so far over the edge with camp and with stupidity that it becomes like a comedy movie. It does have some comedic moments and it also tries to play things straight at a certain point, but you get this weird cross section where it comes up kind of stupid <laughs> because of that. The way characters act and the way characters like make comments to the audience at different points in the movie seem really stupid, you know? Yes, it's dumb, but I also like it because much like movies of this time period, it's really a time capsule. It's a period piece as much as it's a horror movie or even a dark comedy, whatever you want to categorize it as. And this 2003 time frame, the outfits, the way people act, the way they talk, the technology of the time, like it just really brings me back to my high school years. And it really just reminds me 
of people I knew in high school and even some of the ways I would dress and kind of the way I would act growing up. So I like it for that part of it too. There is a good amount of violence and kills in there. There's some nudity in there, which is kind of funny because when we went to the theater, like I said, my entire family was with me. And in the very first, like not even three minutes into the movie, you have the camp counselor taking her clothes off and flashing the camera immediately. And I remember looking over to my mom who was sitting, you know, a couple seats over from me. And she just kind of looked at me and I looked at her as that happened. And we kind of locked eyes and kind of got that feeling of like, why are we here watching this? <laughs> you know, and, and somehow my mom and, and my family kind of like gutted through this. I, I don't, I don't get it. But anyways, yeah, I really like it. And I do enjoy the various uh, fights between Jason and Freddy, even though it takes a long time for them to actually interact. I think they really spread it out more and really tried to like prolong the story and pad out the story before the two main villains clash and fight each other. Where I think if this movie would have been made nowadays in this modern era, they would have interacted and fought way more quickly. And it would have been just escalation of their fights throughout the movie where at the time for this movie, they really tried to slow burn it and really tried to like pad it out before they got to the actual fighting, where I think nowadays they would have just gone right into it. You know, like I said, all the modern movies that are, you know, kind of these clash team up movies like this, really just go whole hog right into it. There might be a little bit of exposition, but usually it's like within the first 15, 20 minutes, you've got the characters fighting already. And this movie takes like an hour for them to get there and actually start fighting. But I do like the different set pieces for them fighting. I do like the visceralness of the practical effects. Uh, the CGI and stuff that they throw in there is kind of stupid and it definitely shows it's an early 2000s movie. But the practical effects of the blood and the gore and stuff like that, even though sometimes it's played to be funny, like when uh, the one dad's head just suddenly shoots off like a bottle cap and just falls off his neck, just completely unprompted. That's kind of stupid, but the actual Blood effects and gore effects, I think, are pretty good in this movie. This is probably my favorite out of the series. Now, I didn't say it's the best, but I think it is my favorite. And nostalgia, I know, plays a lot into that. So real quick, let's talk about the Blu-ray release uh, before I finish up this video. The transfer quality is actually pretty good, pretty nice. Uh, it's clean. It has some film grain present, but it doesn't have a whole lot of DNR and like post-processing to really like muck up the video quality, which at the time, this is kind of early on in the Blu-ray uh, releases. So that could have been a problem and it doesn't really show its face here all that much. The audio is pretty good. It's just a Dolby True HD uh, 5.1 mix. Nothing special, but it is, you know, pretty good. You get all the classic movie kind of tones from the series of these movies in here. Sound effects are pretty good, all that sort of stuff. The one thing I don't like uh, about this in terms of like special features and everything, this disc is set up, it goes immediately into the movie and plays immediately instead of taking you to a menu system. And I generally like having the movies go to a menu system and then being able to click play or going in and selecting your audio options or whatever. Uh, this one, doesn't do that. This just goes immediately into the movie. And when you hit menu, it doesn't even take you to a main menu. It just automatically takes you into the special features menu. It's basically just all the special features just laid out there and there's no audio options or nothing else to change, which would have been nice to have. So also to talk about special features on this real quick, it has a lot of various special features from uh, TV spots and trailers to the Las Vegas press conference before this movie premiered uh, with the actual actors dressed up as Freddy and Jason. Uh, you also have some behind the scenes making of documentaries. You also have director commentary. And it has a pretty cool, I guess, mini documentary or a little like featurette kind of thing uh, about when they debuted this film at a summer camp, kind of stylized like Camp Crystal Lake. And they kind of did this whole summer camp aesthetic with it, uh, which is kind of neat. And they kind of chronicle that in a little featurette on here as well. So this disc and everything on here is actually a pretty good release. And 
to my knowledge, and I may, may be wrong on this, but I'm fairly certain this release here and its two disc DVD counterpart that came out at the same time as this one, I think are the only releases modernly for this film. I don't believe it ever got released on a updated Blu-ray or on a 4K release or anything like that. I'm fairly certain this is the only release that ever came out. I do know, I believe it was bundled in with one of the newer, either Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street combo packs that came out more recently, not the older ones, but some of the newer ones from like Shout Factory or one of the other boutique labels. I, I can't remember completely on that. I do know it's also on streaming, I believe on like HBO Max or somewhere. But for me, the, this Blu-ray release is actually a pretty good release. And like I said, this movie here is my favorite in the Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. I just really love this movie and I really love the nostalgia and everything that comes along with it. So like I said at the beginning of the video, I do have a little bit of a bonus section here at the end. And I was gonna maybe do this as a standalone video, but I thought I would just kind of lump it in here in this video altogether. And I wanna talk to you guys real quickly about this poster that I have right here. Now, I mentioned this poster and I brought it up in one of my very first videos where I did a home theater tour and I went through like everything that was in my home theater at the time. It's like a four hour video split into two parts. But I'm not going into that much detail, but I do wanna talk about this poster. I believe I am the only person that owns this poster that I know of. And this poster was actually a special edition poster that the local drive-in, a couple towns over from where I live, made up for the Friday the 13th movie marathon that they did back in May of 2022, when Friday the 13th fell in May of that year. And what they did, because this was right at the kind of tail end of the pandemic, you know, on there where things were just starting to like get back to some semblance of like normalcy, they did a three movie event. They did Friday the 13th, part one, two, and three, and they played them all back to back on Friday the 13th and Saturday the 14th. And what they did is they allowed people to come in in their RVs and their campers and actually park at the drive-in and stay overnight to watch this overnight movie marathon. And they stylized this poster like a vintage movie theater or vintage uh, drive-in poster, you know, of the time for this style of movie. I wasn't able to actually go and do this overnight movie marathon, which I really wanted to do, but because of my job, I couldn't actually swing that. But what I did do is they not only had these posters set up at the actual drive-in, but they also had a digital image of this poster on their website at the time. And so what I did is I went in and basically just downloaded and stole <laughs> the actual image file that they had on their website. Uh, my wife who works in graphic design was able to kind of upscale it and try and like get the resolution as high as possible. I sent it to one of the like bigger box photo stores and had them print it up in this poster size. And then I just bought this cool, you know, kind of frame from Walmart and then stuck it up here on my wall. So it's just a neat, one of a kind item. Because like I said, unless somebody did what I did and made up one of these posters, or they took one of the actual posters that was at the drive-in, I may be the only person in the world that actually has one of these. And it's just really cool. And like I said, it has the nostalgic feel, it has the cool Friday the 13th kind of grindhouse, kind of low budget feel to it. But it's also, a nostalgia thing for the local drive-in a few towns over from here. So it's really kind of fits in with the area that I live in. So yeah, so it's a little bit of a bonus content here at the end of the video. I just wanted to talk about this. This is a really neat piece and it's definitely something that no one else that I know of has in their home theater. And so with that, we're gonna end this video here today. 
Happy Friday the 13th to everyone out there. I know there's a huge cult following for horror movies and Friday the 13th in particular. Uh, so go ahead and watch your Friday the 13th movie marathons. I'm sure people are going to be running those themselves. They're also going to be showing a bunch of that stuff on cable TV and streaming like they always do. So happy Friday the 13th and make sure to like and subscribe to my channel if you do enjoy the content I make, you know, hit that little bell notification so you get updated when I make new content. It really helps me out. It helps me grow the channel. I really do appreciate it. And with that, I will see you the next time in the next video here on Secondhand Home Theater.